Welp, another week of college football has come to an end. And let's just talk, let's just get the cat out of the bag first. Um, Texas and Oklahoma are still terrible. Um, The process of watching this game was a nightmare. A five-hour game that took four overtimes for Oklahoma to beat Texas. Okay. Spencer Rattler turns the ball over a couple times, gets benched for Tanner Mordecai, comes right back in, and leads soon as to a victory. I mean, what... What can you what can you say about that? Not much. Except there's a lot to explain. Both these defenses are just something else. Like when they can play, when they can make big plays, they can make big plays. When the defenses can. But when they can't, it is rough. And Oklahoma just did what they needed to do for most of the game until Texas had to come right back again. It was the same situation against Texas Tech where Sam Elger basically had to do it all of his own, come back, try and win this game. Now, one of the Stoops children caught the, um, yeah, one of the members on the Stoops family tree caught the final touchdown for Oklahoma. Won the game, of course, you know, Sam Elger threw a pick to the game, but um, it is, honestly, you know, it is, in my opinion, it is time to move on from the Tom Herman experiment, it's not working out here, it's not, and the defenses just, just can't, they can't do anything at all, if you ask them to tackle, can't do that, if you ask the offensive line to block, can't do that, if you ask who even is our offensive coordinator at this point? Because it's the same four plays. I'm telling you. I've been saying it for the longest while that we've run four plays. And it should be four plays. Four or five. If we're being completely honest. More like four to six. But I'm telling you. It's a curl flat. It's a slant. It's a long vertical pass. A screen. An inside zone. Or a QB run with Ellinger. That stuff isn't going to get it done. You can't run the same four plays on offense for three quarters and expect to win. Defense needs to tackle. Defense needs to get stops. Now they were they were they had three turn. The, the the sad thing is, is that we forced three turnovers. Could not do anything with the three turnovers. Could do a thing. To be completely honest with you, we had all the momentum with those three turnovers. Nothing. Nothing came out of that. I'll tell you another defense who I've been saying is bad as we shift away from Texas, Oklahoma. What about them Florida Gators? Oh, boy. You don't allow... You don't allow 30 points and keep, you know, South Carolina close. Keep Ole Miss and South Carolina close like that. It's going to bite you in the butt. And it just did that. You know, Kellen Mond was lighting it up on... Florida. I know, shocking, right? Jimbo gets another win against the top five team. He hasn't done that in a while, so it's good for him. Um, but Kyle Trask still played well. You gotta, I mean, he's got weapons all over the field, so I think Florida will be just fine on the offensive side, but on the defensive side, boy, these guys can't cover. The secondary is getting torched out there. It's a rough, rough world. Your secondary gets torched like that. And, and, I mean, Florida and Texas a and were neck and neck pretty much the entire game. So, you, there is no excuse at this point. What about North Carolina? How about the backs in the backfield? Carter and Williams in the backfield for the Tar Heels. Just running it up all over the Hokies. And I thought this game was going to be completely over. You know, after North Carolina had amassed a 21 to nothing lead, Sam Howell was just lighting it up on the field again. I mean, he's completing it to his receivers. He's doing what he needs to do. Mac Brown is coaching this game excellently. But Virginia Tech had three quarterbacks in there. 
which was very surprising to me. Um, Hedris to the hooker, and I um, forgot the other guy's name already. Um, what was his name? I forgot. I never forgot. But they had three quarterbacks in there for, for Virginia Tech. And, you know, it was a lot closer than the score indicated, to be completely honest with you. Still an 11-point victory. Defense got to toughen it up, though. They got to toughen it up. You can't do that against Clemson. You can't do that. We'll talk about Clemson in a moment, but you can't. But um, how about the Missouri Tigers? You know, you know. I mean, it was just like wow. These guys came out with three missing wide receivers and still put up forty-five points on the defending national champions. And sucks to say it, LSU is one and two. Guys, Ed, y'all got to figure it out on defense. You got to figure it out because, you know, giving up flea fr- flickers and whatnot um, ain't going to cut it. That's not going to cut it. Secondary giving up long bombs and stuff like that, that's not going to cut it. Not going to cut it at all. So what about the Georgia Bulldogs and the upstart Tennessee Volunteers? Well, for the first half, it seemed like the game was pretty close, you know. I mean, Georgia recovered. Georgia had the mess up on a snap, and Tennessee recovered to the end zone for a touchdown, which was very surprising to me, very surprising. But it didn't even matter in the end. You know, Tennessee had three huge turnovers, and Georgia ran away with it. If you turn the ball over, Guantanamo turned it over at least twice. I think there was another fumble up in there as well. But uh, you can't do that. You can't turn the ball over against Georgia. You can't do that. Stetson Bennett did just enough again. He didn't even have to do much. The Georgia defense was just too strong. And they have a big, big test ahead of them next week. Georgia does. But we'll talk about them in a moment because I have a bone to pick with them as well. So, um, as we keep going down here, I have to look at something completely different for scores tonight and stuff like that. BYU still undefeated. Crazy, right? They beat UTSA. Zach Wilson, you know, he's doing what he needs to do out there. You know, the BYU is just doing just what they need to do. Just go out there and get a W. Can't really say much right now because they. It, it's because of conference-only schedules and whatnot that they can't play anybody because they were going to play somebody. They were going to play six power five teams this year. Supposed to. But then the pandemic happened. So that's not so that didn't happen anymore. But at least uh, for the time being they do have ten games, at least. Um Brock Purdy and company down there in Iowa State. Iowa State still leads the Big Twelve, along with um, Kansas State and Oklahoma State. So um it's looking real Interesting at the top without, you know, Texas and Oklahoma being up there, right there. And then, you know, some questionable ref ball in the end, at the end of the arkansas Auburn game. Should have been a fumble. I'm not going to lie to you. Should have been a fumble, but it wasn't. Auburn escapes. So, what about Alabama? What about Alabama? You don't allow 600 yards of offense to Lane Kiffin. And the old Miss Rebels. You don't do that. You don't do that. Speaking of another Mississippi team, real quick. Did Kentucky just really just like, you know, they did they only allow a safety against Mississippi State? I don't know I don't know about the rest of that game, but last I checked it was 22, 21 to two. Um but yeah. Ole Miss's defense was bad anyway, you know, they had already allowed fifty a fifty burger. To Florida, so this wasn't too surprising. But then, you know, Najee Harris ran up for five touchdowns in that game, 200 yards. Boy, it's going to be real interesting next week to see how Georgia can attack these Alabama, um, you know, these corners and safeties and whatnot, because that's a pretty weak you know, side of things. But then again, the front seven isn't as strong as it was either because they allowed a bunch of rushing touchdowns to Ole Miss too. 
But yeah, Bama scrapes by with a victory, yet yeah, the final score may indicate something even more than that of a, than a scrape. But it, it felt like a scrape to me. You know, for a second, for a second I thought Notre Dame was in trouble, but then they just took care of business. Ian Book and company took care of business against Florida State. Nothing really to see here. Didn't even watch this game. It's Florida State. They're not good. And finally, last but not least, we have a top 10 matchup that was supposed to be, you know, hey, Miami's back. Hey, we're back, baby. Miami Hurricanes. They're not back. I don't know what y'all thought this was. Whew, boy, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Except for the questionable 61-yard kick that got returned for a Miami touchdown. Miami didn't have any momentum in this game. Clemson steamrolled them. The terrible tees, the two terrible tees, Trevor and Travis, just did what they needed to do. That defense of Clemson's is still looking good despite losing a whole bunch of talent. Still looking good out there. Just stuffed Deer King. I mean, aside from, like, one big run that he had in, like, the second quarter or something, Miami couldn't do anything. Couldn't do a damn thing out there. And, I mean, it's more it's more of the same again. You know, clubs dominating their ACC competition. So, yeah, there's that. So, I think, you know, some things before we close it out here tonight is um, who's going to win the Big 12. Don't think it's going to be Oklahoma or Texas. Maybe not. It, I mean, both these teams are just not good. They already have two losses in conference play. And it's, I mean, it's just, it's just going to be hard. It's going to be hard for somebody to lose twice. You know, that's in the lead for division right now. Iowa, I mean, not the division, the conference. I mean, Iowa State's looking pretty good despite that loss, you know, to a Sun Belt team. Kansas State looking good also despite a loss to a Sun Belt team. And, you know, Oklahoma State still has Chuba Hubbard in the backfield. We, I, we will get to see him next Saturday night in, in that same window with Georgia, Alabama, hopefully, you know, because Baylor still has a bunch of positive COVID tests. But on the bright side, too, UMass, hey, guys, you guys scheduled a game. Good job. You guys got a game for this year. You know, UMass said they were coming back in, like, September or something like that, and then boom. Went out and scheduled a game against Georgia Southern. Good job, guys. Good job. And a couple other things real quick. Some two teams finally played their games this week. Temple and Houston. Temple, I know, was itching to get onto the field, but they lost to Navy. And um, I don't know about Houston to Lane. I think Houston won that game. I'm not sure. I don't really care. But Houston finally got on the field after covid testing results that came back positive at other schools. They finally got to play. Good for them. Good for them that they get to play this year. Um, but with that being said, everybody, week six is over. We still have a long way to go. November is creeping. It is going to be here sooner than you know it. And did the crunch for a championship will come. And right now, I think, you know, Clemson, until somebody can beat them, Alabama. And if it's Georgia that can beat them, then so be it. But, you know, I think Alabama will still be in it anyway. But anyway, Clemson, Bama, Georgia, and the Big Ten team. That's my top four right now. And I know you're going to say, Michael, somebody has, the Big Ten hasn't even played yet. They're going to play. It's going to be either Ohio State, Penn State, or Michigan. I'm telling you that right now. Michigan a little bit, uh, you know, of, of a lower chance because of how they've been. But Ohio State, Penn State, boy, those two teams are going to be lit to watch later in October. But we will see, we will see them in two weeks, the Big Ten. We'll see how that fares in two weeks when the conference play starts and everything like that. 
But yeah, it's gonna do it for this video. Um, but I believe since there's been some cancellations and stuff like that, there's going to be a video Tuesday night for the NFL or Wednesday morning for the recap for week number five and then the preview for week six, which I'm not looking forward to either because the slate for week six is also not that good. Both of those will either be on Wednesday or whatever. And then the college football preview will be um, probably Monday during the NFL game. That's supposed to be on Monday. So like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next video. Big Boy Variety saying peace. Y'all have a good night.